Welcome to Draw Process, a comic book artist drawing a comic book page, sharing my mindset, my struggles, my techniques. This is page 35 of First Sun and Sword. So let's get into it. And here's the thumbnail. Uh, the dragoness, uh, Denise, the woman uh, with the cloak and the sword that led the, the soldiers for King Croc. She um, is talking to King Croc as he slowly emerges from his den. Uh, she's uh, shocked and concerned. So, um, what he's telling her, uh, well, at the end of the last, uh, page, she walks in to say, Hey, everything's ready to transport the boy. And he asks her a question. Do you know why Lord Czar wants the boy? And she's, her answer is, well, I don't question my orders. Um, she knows the game. Um, but he tells her that, uh, he is a first peoples that for the sun is first peoples so um this what concerns her about this is like that means that lord czar is going to want him very badly and king croc is saying i'm going to take the boy i'm going to uh, eat the boy uh, and get his power and that's what lord czar wants and i can't uh, so so i'm just gonna take it but she, um, she's concerned that Lord Czar would be very angry if this happens. She doesn't, you know, trust that King Croc would actually become so powerful that, um, all her problems are solved. She thinks this would be a huge problem. So she's having a, a big dilemma, which is fun to introduce, you know, this other character, uh, that's having her, uh, her problem here. Uh, this could have been a moment that was kind of throwaway. Um, just, she comes in, he comes out and tries to eat the boy, but, um, you know, always trying to do better at writing. And, and I think that it, that in this case, it felt like a good thing to do to, uh, in you know, just bring her character to life more, create more uh, tension and conflict, um, a witness to what's going to unfold and all that. Um, and, uh, and a wild card because we don't, you don't know what, how she's going to react to what's happening. She seemed totally, you know, faithful to uh, King Croc, but you really don't know how she's going to react now. You can see me working out the perspective there. Um, I, you know, I had a thumbnail for this, um, and it was pretty well positioned, but I, I end up restructuring the drawing on the page. I don't, I'm not good at just uh, drawing, redrawing the same image. Uh, so trying to find, you know, exactly where would she be standing and the boy, I need to be able to see the boy because she's, he's to her left. So, um, uh, and across the width of the room, so he could end up behind her if I don't get the angle right. And I want you to be able to see him too. And King Croc and him to still seem kind of the focus. So close to the center or a third, uh, like a, a third of the, of the panel. All right. It is, um, it's the morning right now for me, the day before this gets posted. So, um, I, I typically record these like during the day, um, when I feel good, but I didn't get around to it this week. So I'm doing it like first thing in the morning. Um, I think that that's going to be nice because it, it turns it into like a ritual um, that you get up, you, you talk, um, you share what you're thinking and feeling and then you get it done. And that just seems like a good thing to do. Uh, get the ego out of the way too and when making it more ritual uh, because it doesn't matter if I'm well rested and feel good and have good things to say. I just get up and do it because that's what I do. And that's the only way I've been able to, to do these videos um, in general is to, to keep that in mind, to not think too hard about what I'm doing and just do it. Same thing with the comic work. Uh, to write or to draw, you just have to do it. Um... Let's see the, 
Yeah, talking about just doing it. I've been thinking about, and I spoke with some comic artists about these topics to a degree, and I'm struggling to remember what we talked about, so I, I don't know what to reference um, there, but uh, about shame. So there are um, there are think like. 90s image comics or um, the example that came up in group of berserk but there are uh, art art you know comics stories uh, and books as well but we're you know we're talking about comics they um, that feel very um, unabashed uh, very earnest in this case it's it's very you know very earnest and very kind of like adolescent male energy and it can be kind of ridiculous, and it can it can make you gawk at it. But uh, the, they can feel like the creator is um, very genuine, very earnest in that. And uh, I I think a, a lot of you know when I look at like Avengers, Avengers movies, for example, uh, Disney movies there. And the way that they throw in a joke every now and then at like at like serious moments, they they give you an, a little joke. That's an example to me of this like really self conscious, um, kind of creating, kind of storytelling, and uh, and it, and it would apply to art too. That it could appear self conscious, and uh, and and we could call that shame. And I wonder if that's even a better a better word for it. That there's more shame. Uh, because it isn't, uh, you know, that earnest, unabashed, um, ex you know, uh, exhibition, right, of your, of your power and, and energy. So, um, yeah, but that, that came up and, and I've been thinking about, um, that because, uh, I think that, that self-consciousness and that shame holds me back a lot. Uh, it leads to studying and learning and listening to other people's ideas and thoughts instead of sitting with my own. Uh, and it leads to um, the, the stories I write being uh, more introspective, uh, less, less extreme. I mean, it's hard to put words to it, but they're less, less sincere in a way. Uh, not not so earnest, and there's something really nice about stories that feel very um, earnest, very uh, capturing a real feeling. Because it's not just like the the adolescent energy; it's the uh, really saying something, really really capturing a feeling that they're trying that's trying to be sh to, to be communicated. And and if you're really self conscious, you're not you're in your head, you're intellectual. And you're not really feeling. And uh, that might actually be like a benefit of, you know, working in a team. Like um, if the if if the writer has, you know, if, if the script is, is written uh, with a voice that is really feeling, then um, it could become easier for the artist to express uh, that feeling more sincerely because they're not so uh, caught up in it themselves. Right. Um, and at least, you know, one person working on the, on the book is uh, maybe able to bring that energy, but, um, but yeah, when you're, when you're writing your own book and it's your own characters and uh, then you are more on display and you could be more self-conscious, but that is the kind of work I want to do. I want to do work that is uh, very self-expressive, um, and that's dangerous work to do. Uh, it's fulfilling work. It's rich. Um, yeah, and here I am on this book, and it's you know it's pretty long, and I want to stick with this a long time. I feel like it gives me enough of a playground. Like I haven't written the next story yet. So 
but but each story could take a year at this rate. I really I really am itching to to speed it up though, to do more than one page a week, and I might not uh, I might not do one of these draw process videos uh, for every single page because uh, because that adds time. These take time to do so. Um, you know, I'd like to at least stick with one of one of these videos per week, but that means I might not get to record every page I draw, uh, which was, so I'm, I'm not sure how I want to address that, but, um, but yeah, still, you know, it could be a year for a whole, a whole book and, or six months if I do, uh, if I speed up, but that is, uh, that is a commitment to completing whatever story I'm working on. And these are like just fun stories, like to a degree, these aren't super serious. These are action, fun comics. Um, and, and then, yeah, and once I write the story and I stick with, you know, that story, I'm, I'm stuck with it for, for a year or six months. And, and sometimes I feel like I want to do something else. Like I would like to, you know, fly away, just go, just make something super creative, so different. And and that's what I did last year uh, in the summer. I made uh, two one shot sci fi comics, and I'd never made a sci fi, and and I was just itching to do something different. And um, and I'm I'm happy with how that went, and I. I felt really free to just draw it however I wanted, do it differently than some of my other books. Um, and both are, both are substantially different. Um, and they were just regular length comics, but they were, they were a blast. Um, and they were weird. So, so that was, that was pretty effective. Um, at, at scratching that itch of like just wanting to do something totally different, just fly away. But then after the second one, I felt like I want to do something more long term. I want to, uh, you know, make characters that uh, I love, that I want to stick with. Uh, Cat and the Fiddle was, is the only one I've ever made. Well, uh, the seven dwarfs in, uh, in Snow, and uh, the Snow Witch story, they are... They were really fun to draw, and I wanted to continue with them to a degree, but they're kind of a strange idea of a character because there's seven of them, and they all look almost the same and almost have the same personality. So it's like, uh, and and yeah, I never really got very far with, with what would happen next. But uh, Cat and the Fiddle, um, it's a, a young woman that turns into a fairy cat, and she has a magical living fiddle um, that she can kind of communicate with. Uh, and when she plays it, she can do magic, uh, mainly like telekinetic stuff. Um, but yeah, the, I, I wrote like, there's a full six issue story arc, um, the, the King of Instruments, uh, and that's like her origin story. And I remember getting bored, uh, to a degree working on the origin story. Cause I'm like, man, like origin stories tend to feel like, filled with tropes, like so predictable, like a little boring. They just have to complete this arc. And then I was like, well, I'll get that over and then I'll do something a lot more interesting in the second arc. And, and then what I ended up doing was writing something that, that, that actually was stronger. Uh, it was stronger storytelling, stronger scene by scene action. But then it started to waver after about 68 pages. Um, and I've, and I got hit with that. I'm feeling bored by this. Like, it, this isn't what I always set out to do. What I, what I always wanted to do with cat and fiddle was have, uh, have them on adventures, like, like I'm doing with first son and sword in a way, but each issue, I wanted them to have a different adventure and they're encountering some other strange occurrence because it's basically, you know, weird occult and fairy tale, fairy magic a lot of animal fairy creatures. Uh, I wanted, you know, them to go across the countryside in uh, Europe and encounter interesting stuff. Like, and you, you see that like in Hellboy, like uh, BPRD or with, with Hellboy, kind of these short stories. Uh, 
the traveling wanderer, right? Uh, but yeah, I kind of wanted to get to that place, but what I ended up doing was telling this origin story that left off with some sort of cliffhanger thing. So then I thought, okay, this next arc, I'll, I'll finalize the, I feel like this story isn't done. I'll finalize this origin story in a way, and then I'll get to those short stories. But I didn't, I ended up quitting, uh, because after, you know, 68 pages, and then I drew like 11 of the next issue, because these were huge issues, and there was going to be four of them. Uh, I drew like 11 pages on the next issue, and then I thought, you know, this is kind of boring. Like, I'm just, uh, the story wasn't wasn't great. Uh, it wasn't resolving great, so that's on me uh, for not writing it better. But um, but it, it, was, it was even more so just I, I didn't want to be stuck drawing that for the next, uh, year, year and a half. Um, and yeah, I didn't feel strongly about the story, but even if I did, I just didn't want to be stuck with this kind of story that I was doing. So, um, someday I, I might go back to it cause, uh, that, that is a strong character that I enjoy, uh, but I don't know how I will do that. Um, I was thinking I, maybe I can rewrite this fairy folk revival uh, is what this arc is called. You know, so there was four, almost, you know, 60, 68 page issues and I've got one of them done. But um, I thought, well, maybe I'll just totally change expectations here and not make this a simply a second story arc like the origin story. Uh, a lot of time could pass or something you don't know uh, between uh, those issues. Um, so I might go back to that someday. Um, but, uh, I do find this to be a more fulfilling story. So some of the things that make this like the playground, you know, that I enjoy, I think the characters that I have, uh, there's, uh, you know, with cat and fiddle, cat was the only one that could speak and fiddle makes a musical note and then she interprets the musical note. Um, so there's no banter. Um, and just having a few main characters that interact with each other, that's, that's helpful. Um, this, so this comic has, you know, several, three, uh, Farrah, Sword and Son, main characters that, um, that can have banter and, uh, and they're more fleshed out characters. So the, their, um, personalities, their, their backstories, their hopes and dreams, their conflicts with each other are more clear to me. Um, and that makes it feel endless in like what I could have them do with each other. It makes it easy to think of those things. Uh, so that's something that really helps this feel uh, more rich. Uh, the world itself is more fantastic. It doesn't feel as uh, limited and difficult to d to think of what I could do. Uh, so in Cat and Fiddle, it's Victorian era, kind of crossing over into the beginning of the of the twentieth century. At some point, you know, it might cross over at that that threshold, but it's kind of a Victorian era and. Um, in Europe. And so there's limitations on like, you know, how far am I going to push technology? How historically accurate do I need to be? Um, and there was some confusion for me, uh, some lack of clarity on how the fairy world works and the music magic works. And, and I had some cool ideas that I kept fiddling with, uh, <laughs> fiddling with, uh, cause cat and fiddle. Um, but uh, it, it, it just was a bit of a struggle compared to this world where it's very open-ended. Um, and I enjoy, you know, pulling from historical reference and so on. So uh, this world lets me do that still, of course. I can, I can look up uh, all sorts of civilizations and uh, cultures and stuff and, and, uh, go any direction I want with the next issue. Cause I, I haven't made it clear. Like I don't have a world map and it's like, here's where they are and here's where each culture is. So next we have to be here and it has to look like this. Like I've been 
toying with, well, what is this? Is, is, are they going to end up uh, in a desert again? Or is it going to be like a river kind of uh, people? Is it going to be like a small village? Is it, you know, what, what kind of uh, situation are they going to walk into? A very warlike, uh, you know, city state. So uh, what? Uh, so like it could be anything, uh, which is which makes it fun. So yeah, the characters are are more fleshed out. There's more. They're able to have more interaction. Um, the The world is 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 large and vast and easy to navigate. Um, there is a there's a set conflict. Um, I know. Uh, I know what the, I know how the story ends to a degree, which I, I as, which helps. And, uh, I know what the, who the bad guys are and what they want. And in, uh, in cat and fiddle, it was much more an open ended kind of world. And it was, yeah, there's going to be some bad guys that come and go. There's going to be, um, mysteries and, and certain occult groups that, that she's going to have to deal with. But, it wasn't like it wasn't such a clear uh conflict um so that was something that that i have in this book that um that's going to help for sure um there are uh, there are side characters that i'm i'm developing so like this dragoness D- denise she has a back history with with a uh, sword that i came up with um, and she's going to have her own, you know, conflicts here. So she, she, uh, used to work with sword as a mercenary. Um, I'm not going to say more about that right now, but, uh, she became, um, you know, he basically like left her, um, she became jaded and, uh, went to, the lizards, you know, to serve them, um, which sword is very against. So I'd imagine at some point she was against it, but, uh, she's kind of given up on doing any good, um, uh, or having her freedom and power that maybe they were after as mercenaries or something. Um, so she's just, she's given over to just serving them and, and doing evil. Uh, she's even changed her, uh, her body. So she's, you know, got, and she's installed, um, bumps on her, on her head and on her, uh, eyebrows to look more like a crocodile and shaved her head. And she wears this mask all the time. Um, so, you know, she's kind of the Darth Vader. She's, uh, gotten lost in this. So this, uh, this gives her some interesting conflicts to, to deal with through the story. So, um, and she, she can be, she can go one way or the other. Sometimes she may do good. She, and then a lot of times she's going to do bad. Um, it'll be an interesting, you know, side character that can come in and out of uh, the story. And then I'm working on some other ones too. Um, so, uh, that, that, uh, is always, I feel like that enriches the world cause it's more, um, there's, there's more players on the table. Like my, my toy box is more full uh, my Lego, you know, box is more full of Legos. I could build more stuff and, and do more. Um, and, and I think, um, this is a bit of a tangent, but I think it's good to, uh, to try as a creator to build some kind of intellectual property um, to build, you know, to have characters or something. Right. So like if you're not famous and you're not just celebrated just on your art alone, which, you know, I'm not, uh, on that level, then, uh, if you have a character and you have a world and like a thing that is identifiable, um, then, uh, I think you're more likely to attract fans. You're more likely to get readers and get people that care about what you're doing, like that want to, want to read it, want to see what you're doing. Um, so you can make something greater than yourself, you could say. Uh, and you know, I think there's a lot of, 
uh, comic books made in indie comics that um, don't feel, I mean, well, and, and ones by publishers too, of course, but they don't feel like they have the most recognizable characters, right? They don't have them that much of a, like a, a long, like a, an identity that feels like this could be, you know, out, outlast us, you know, could go on. And, uh, and part of that is it's, it takes dedication and a lot of time to, um, to commit like to something longer that, you know, typically it's going to feel longer, but it doesn't have to, it could just be short. Um, uh, so just, you know, identifiable, uh, with the character designs, the, the world, so, you know, it just feels like this is a thing. Um, you know, so when I did my sci-fi comics, it didn't have that feel exactly, exactly. It was, it was a short form story, um, that, you know, like a typical short sci-fi story, the characters are kind of throwaway. It's not meant to go on beyond what you see. Um, and, and, and it feels very, you know, it, I think it could feel very rich and, and good when you look at it, but it doesn't have anything, uh, lasting in it, you know? It's like, yeah, a a good Western or a John Wayne Western or Clint Eastwood, you know, there's a difference like when it, when it's identifiable, um, as that thing, then, uh, it, it, it feels like a life of its own that, uh, that people might attach to. So, um, that, that's an important element, I think. Uh, and this book has that more than some others. I mean, cat and the fiddle had that in a way you've got the cat and fiddle are recognizable and and kind of clear. So there's, there's some clarity there. Um, but, um, this one definitely, uh, definitely I considered that, uh, that I would want it to feel like a, you know, look like it's a thing. And I haven't done the cover yet or like a logo. So that'll be interesting when I kind of come up with how do I make this look on the outside, you know, just as a brand, let's say. Um, so I want that to, to capture it more. Um, I've been... Well, I was going to talk about like just my drawing seems to be changing a little bit. My pencils are getting a little more looser, a little more cartoony, like, or, or, or like rounded, a little less sharp edges. And, um, and I think that's from my sketchbook work. Like, uh, I could even say this looks more like a manga style, but, um, by sketching more than I used to and working on my drawing, uh, when I'm drawing in the sketchbook and, uh, especially like referencing and trying to learn some anatomy and whatnot. Uh, I, I'm going to draw with more curvy lines. Like, uh, it, it, it's not as structured and blocky because, um, I'm, I'm letting my hand just move and kind of match, match these lines on the, that I'm looking at. But that's just got me practicing again and again, uh, to draw that way. And so then when I get on the comic book page, my pencils end up having more of that, um, rounded, you know, look and that more, uh, loose, loose in a way. Look, um, so it's got me moving away from heavy shadow use and, uh, you know, composition to more, um, cartooning, just drawing the figure on the page uh, and then throwing in shadows wherever I want, you know, but not, it's not, it's not a compositional, you know, planned out image as much. It's more just drawing, uh, doodling the figure out and then throwing in the shadow maybe as an afterthought in a way. Um, and, and I, that, that's not a bad thing. I don't think for me, it's like, it it helps me, um, move quickly and not take it too seriously, uh, which, which can give it a certain uh, quality of spontaneity. Um, but yeah, like when I do the thumbnail, sometimes I take a few attempts at how to set up the shots, but a lot of times it's just the first thing I think of like this, this shot right here. First thing I think of is this angle to show 
King Croc coming out and, and all the characters in the scene for, show the establishing shot at this angle. Um, and then I just do it, you know, and I, 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 I haven't been thinking that hard about, okay, where is this composition the most balanced, like the most perfect, uh, have I done it in such a way that I can put shadows in the best places? It's, it's less of that. And it's more, here it is, everyone, you know, like, boom, here's the characters background done, you know, um, which in the past I've been, uh, there's been times I've been more cautious in, in the composition that like each panel is composed, um, to look, a certain way, you know, and the same way I would be more careful and composed with a cover. And, uh, that's, that's something, uh, I see like in Mike Mignola and it's something I, that I, you know, I learned there, I would say, uh, and it was more necessary in the past that I do that because I wasn't as good at drawing backgrounds and figures and stuff. So I, I planning it out more and going composition heavy, I could lean on my strong, my strong suit, my skill, and uh, and not deal with what I'm weaker at as much. Um, but yeah, I guess you know, getting more comfortable and easy, more organic, more flowing in in my ability to execute uh, whatever I want to show, the more I can loosen up on composition, loosen up on and not focus on those things as much. And just uh, just put it down, which uh, you know it changes the the look of the book when you do that. Uh, for me, it, uh, you know, I mentioned manga. It it does look more manga to me. That style of just kind of throwing it on there, without uh, a whole lot of composition consideration. Um, but yeah, that seems to be what the direction I'm going to a degree. Um, I definitely want to get faster, so I don't disapprove of of how things are, are uh, developing for me. Um, I definitely want to get faster. Uh, and I'm looking forward to trying a, a different coloring style in the next issue, um, next story. I'd like to try something a little more um, full color, but also simple and easy. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I think I've said everything I wanted to about uh, the reasons that uh, the sort of things that I put in this book that help me feel uh, like I can play in that playground and uh, that it can have some staying power and uh, grab attention. Um, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say about that. But that's, um, yeah, that's really nice. And, um, if you can come up with that thing for you, uh, you know, build the playground you can play in and that will, it will maybe with shorter stories involved, uh, so that, um, you're not locked into one big, you know, origin arc, um, like I did on cat and fiddle. Um, then, um, yeah, you got a big playground. You can tell any story you want, but you're also building, um, recognizable characters, uh, a, a thing that feels like it, it uh, could get attention and exist, uh, with, with, uh, staying power. So, um, so yeah, about the origin, you know, story arc, um, you know, I guess, uh, yeah, that's, that's sort of another problem is, you know, how do you introduce your characters, uh, it, without going into this long story arc? Uh, cause there's, there's going to be like an origin, you know, to your character, let's say in most stories. So, um, in this one, what I've done is, um, the first issue, which, you know, it's kind of long, so maybe I kind of did that, but it, it's, it's 60 pages instead of, you know, 130 or what, 148 or something. Um, so it's like a jumbo issue that it gives you like one full story, but, um, it's not exactly, I, I don't know. I don't know how to put it, but it's not exactly an origin story. 
Um, so if this had been the origin story, it might, it might have started with Sword as a mercenary working. He gets the job to transport Sun. They go together. Uh, something goes wrong. Uh, Sun actually saves his life. And he, you know, he and he didn't, maybe he didn't know he was transporting humans because he probably has a rule against that, that uh, he doesn't deal in slaves. But then uh, he discovers this boy. This boy just saved my life. I owe him. Now let's go across the desert, go to the, try to find out uh, if he is the boy from this uh, weaver here. And, you know, like that, that would have been more the origin story. Like, but I skipped a lot of it. I jumped in with them about to arrive at the city um, and let, let people figure out who the characters are. And, um, and then this story in itself, it doesn't, it doesn't resolve a story arc so much. Like, I mean, it does cause they go into the city, they deal with King Croc, you know, and we end that, uh, that, that arc in a way, but, it, uh, the bigger story arc of what's happening, it's not stretched out. It's not, it's not anything bigger exactly. Um, it's more like we establish like we establish who, what the bigger arc might be and who the bigger villain might be. So, um, yeah, there's, I don't know, just trying to say a bit about some ways that, uh, you can try to avoid ending up stuck in this long character arc. And here's the finished page. A different font on uh, King Croc's voice and a, and a kind of rough looking word balloon. He doesn't quite speak in uh, in standard, you know, form, standard English. I think he refers to himself in third person for one. So that's it for this week. You can read the whole comic on ikecomics.com. Links in the description. Um, so be the practice of your art. Encourage others to do the same. I'll see you next week.